So for the purposes of being able to make my healing tactics video, I have asked a bunch of my friends I just larked with to join me. So I'm going to be in my Ruby costume while I demonstrate different strategies when you're a healer. Ruby herself, not a healer. She's a big mean scout. But I'm keeping her costume on. She's a pretty fierce bandit. <laughs> Hey there, battle buddies and healthy heroes. My name is Susie. I am not a medical professional, just an enthusiastic nerd. And today I'm going to give you some tips about battlefield tactics when you are a healer. Uh, there are two main methods to being a healer in my experience and opinion. You could be a backpack healer or you could be a triage focused healer. And these are not strict rules that you have to lock yourself into. You can go back and forth, but I took a little video with some friends so I could show you backpack healing and how to stay with your fighter and respond to their needs and keep them up. And then triage healing, which is how to get to someone who's down on the ground, some strategies for you know getting them safe and making sure you don't lose anybody. Um, why is this good for a battlefield? I don't think I have to tell you why it's important to have capable and fit healers on your battlefield because they literally, you keep people alive. You need your healers to know what they're doing, to have strategy, to have awareness. And why is this good for your body? Um, it's really a tactics discussion, but if you are a backpack healer, you need footwork that's good enough to match your fighter so you can stay with them. And if you're a triage healer, uh, having strong legs for fast sprints and lots of squatting up and down is going to be beneficial for your healing prowess. So I hope this strategy video helps give you some fun inspiration and ideas for how to be a battlefield healer. Enjoy! I'd like to introduce you to Lacey, Jeremy, and maybe a secret Morgan back there who are going to help me show you how to be a backpack healer. Um, I have a cauliflower in my hand for extra packets, and I make contact wherever we have agreed, you know, consent beforehand. And I have a spell packet ready to throw or cast, and my fighter squares off against another fighter. Here's some things that can happen. I stay with him. We have equal footwork. So maybe Lacey swings like a 10 something ah. and if my if i know that my fighter has taken 10 damage and i'm a backpack i could keep up with him and say i call upon earth to grant 10 healing because i'm hearing the calls too so i'm keeping him in top shape sometimes Normal. the monsters Normal. throw spells Normal. and you have a spell feel on now already yep uh it's uh you could say activate web Activate web. Or spell, oh, spell, spell shield. And I hear, I see that he got hit with a spell. I need a spell shield. And I can go, I protect you with a spell shield. So backpack healers can be tracking damage, tracking oh, spells. Sometimes oh, other sneaky monsters might come in the field. And a backpack hand could even direct oh, subtly the attention oh, of the fighter. Oh. Or with this other packet, with Mystic Force, I repel you. Or with Binding Force, I repel you in the new rules. And then Morgan has to stay back. So your backpack can do all of these things for you when you're a fighter. You have a wide variety of spells as an earth caster. And this is just a little setup of a couple of little skills. I think that's it. Thanks, guys. And suddenly my fighter is a killing blow. I can run in here and interrupt. You can interrupt with your hand, can you? Or do you need a weapon? Who knows? We'll clarify that with the rules, Marshall. I can go, uh, I grant you the gift of life, or I call upon Earth to grant you life. I should clarify my uh, incants. Okay, clearly a couple bloopers there. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't expect Jeremy to suddenly die. Lacey killed him, and I wasn't going to demonstrate that. But it's a good point to make, and I did double-check the rules. You may interrupt a killing blow, even if you're a bare-fisted caster. You don't have to have a weapon skill per alliance rules to stop a killing blow from happening. Uh, but it is the safest idea just to point within arm's reach, point and say interrupt. You don't actually want to smack somebody's buffer or do some sort of physical contact with their equipment. You don't need to make a dangerous gesture point and say interrupt and you saved them if you didn't save them in time the three count happened they're dead if anyone needs a life spell the correct 2.0 incant is I call upon earth to grant you life everything in the effect group of earth every spell in the earth effect group is now the same incant I call upon earth to bleh. 
And also, also, please forgive me. Repel is now Eldritch Force. When Mystic Force went away, that was an old incant, um, Repel changed from the Binding Effect group to the Eldritch Force Effect group. So I didn't even catch that. I didn't even say that right. With Eldritch Force, I repel you. And that's a great spell for a backpack healer to have. Uh, one final comment about backpack healing. The cauliflower in this hand and the packet ready to throw in the other hand. It's good to have packets in both hands, to be clear, because when you're backpacking, you can touch cast because you already have a packet in this hand. I don't have to reach my hand over every time. I can throw a repel over here and then say, I protect you with a spell shield or whatever else with my backpacking hand because the cauliflower, the packets are already in these fingers on his hand. So just to be a super efficient backpack healer, you got packets in both hands. And those are the correct incants and rules. Uh, let's move on to a little bit of triage. Have fun. So in this healing demonstration, I'm going to pivot roles from backpack to triage. I see a dead friend. Morgan's now a friend. Uh, we're going to position and I'm going to leave him. The first thing I say is begin first aid because if she's bleeding out, that's a time limit. If they are bleeding out, this is a time limit for you. So I begin first aid and then I might even need to, I pick you up. I take Morgan back to where it's safe. And once Morgan is stabilized and away from behind enemy lines, I can go back to my backpack. So triage is all about getting people back to safe spots. You can pivot your fighter to make a clear path. And the most important part about triage is starting with begin first aid because the bleed out count is fastest. If they say no effect, then they are already dead and that's when you cast the life spell. Triage is getting them off the ground. Backpacking is staying with your fighter. It's good to go back and forth between them. That's it. Hey, one last thing about triage healing. This is the last interruption, I swear. Triage healing is all about getting people up when they're down. And so that idea of cutting a safe path to get to them, it can look a lot of different ways, depending on the urgency of the situation, depending on the danger of the situation. If you don't have a fighter that you're paired up with as a backpack, you might need to at least let someone else know, some other friendly know, I'm making a break for it, I'm going for them, I'm going in. So they can, you know, keep eyes on you, cover your back. Um, Cause you don't want to get two people dropped over behind enemy lines, right? So, and if you can't even do that, it might look like just hucking a spell, hucking a small five points of healing spell to allow their count to restart. Even if you heal them and they can't make it back on their own and they get cut down again, at least you know you've restarted their 60 seconds bleed out count. Um, and if you huck the healing, you hear no effect, then they're on their death count already, then you gotta huck the life spell. Um, so it really depends on the urgency of the situation, but triage is about responding to urgency and getting people up when they're down over enemy lines. I hope this helps, have fun.